Before we begin, it is important to note that the two WZ-8S appear to be actual aircraft, not prototypes. It is unclear to what extent they represent the current maturity of the program, but these are indeed real aircraft. Given that the WZ-8 has been in existence for some time, these may be early demonstration models or an early production configuration. In recent years, we have been closely monitoring China's ambitions in the field of high-tech combat UAVs. This is not surprising, considering China's pursuit of advanced technology in jet engines and how they will use this aircraft in operation. Developing an engine capable of operating at high supersonic speeds is a significant technological challenge. The use of rocket engines provides a much simpler and affordable solution for propulsion, which can accelerate the WZ-8 to extreme speeds, but it may also limit its maneuverability and range. The WZ-8 is a high-speed, high-altitude, air-launched reconnaissance UAV that can return via a runway landing. It also bears a striking resemblance to some high-speed shapes that China has been testing in recent years through high-altitude balloon drops. What's new is that we now know its propulsion system, rocket engines. The depicted aircraft features a pair of small, open-cycle, liquid-fueled rocket engines installed side-by-side. -side. It's unclear whether these engines are reusable or single-use. We also don't know the exact type of fuel they use, but being rocket engines, this craft could potentially have the capability to reach extreme altitudes, possibly approaching the edge of space. It could then use the acquired speed and altitude to continue on a quasi-ballistic trajectory before reorienting towards a recovery point in denser air and ultimately gliding for landing. So, we're not talking about something necessarily limited to the altitudes of the SR-71A12D21 or kinetic characteristics. The big question is how it can control itself at altitudes where traditional flight control surfaces are no longer effective. Without a reaction control system, which it doesn't appear to have, it would likely be limited to flying below roughly 140,000 feet. With all this in mind, it's likely that this aircraft was built for flights primarily in the uppermost reaches where traditional flight control surfaces are effective, and possibly slightly beyond the ballistic arc for a short duration. This is still quite fast. Even at 135,000 feet, Mach 3.42 equates to 2,500 miles per hour. When it comes to how fast this craft can go, it remains unclear. But one would speculate a high supersonic range, somewhere between 3.5 and 4.5 Mach. At 4.5 Mach at 135,000 feet, that's 3,285 miles per hour. It's not quite hypersonic, but it's incredibly fast. Even a 20-minute cruise at such speeds would allow this craft to cover 1,100 miles it's highly likely that it's launched from the air from a specially equipped H-6N bomber, so this doesn't include the time it takes to get to the launch point or its flight back home, which would be a gliding descent to landing. I would confidently say that this craft could have a flight range of around 1,500 miles. China's H-6 bombers also have the capability to fly far out at sea, launching UAVs in remote locations, allowing them to cover extensive areas in the Pacific Ocean for American aircraft carrier strike groups or conduct high-speed transits over the territory of potential adversaries. Intercepting a small target arriving at 4.5 Mach and an altitude of 135,000 feet is, to say the least, a challenging task. If this aircraft can operate significantly above the altitude at which standard flight control surfaces become ineffective, up to the edge of space, then it is likely hypersonic by nature. However, we currently don't have clear evidence to confirm this capability, although it's worth keeping in mind as we learn more about this system in the coming years. This also provides China with the ability to collect reconnaissance data rapidly, without the adversary knowing that their eyes are overhead, which is a significant limitation of traditional spy satellites. Such reconnaissance capabilities have many applications beyond just detecting aircraft carrier strike groups. The ability to assess damage after ballistic and cruise missile strikes on strategic targets throughout the region would be incredibly valuable, as the gathered information could conserve valuable missiles for other purposes, and enable no-AC commanders to conduct a rapid campaign to deny access over time. This aircraft aligns perfectly with China's broader regional goals and military strategy, which raises the question of what else they have up their sleeves. 
China has a number of large but secretive aerospace programs, including two bombers that are in deep development. There are rumors that one of the bombers may make an appearance at the event commemorating the 75th anniversary of the founding of the PRC. The H-6K variant has entered service, substantially reworked from the original aircraft and optimized as a carrier for long-range cruise missiles for anti-ship and ground targets. The H-6N is a further development of this earlier missile carrier version. The most noticeable difference between the N and K is the complete abandonment of the bomb bay on the N and the addition of a semi-submerged area with a hardpoint for a large missile. In some ways, this is similar to the capability of Russian 222M backfire bombers to carry a single anti-ship cruise missile, like the K-22 or K-32, in a semi-submerged installation under the central part of the fuselage. There are no photos showing H-6N with its payload, and on some of them, it seems like there is a cover that gives the fuselage a normal profile when the missile is not loaded. So it remains unclear what type of weaponry or munitions the Chinese intend to use on these aircraft. The primary weapon for the H-6N will be a derivative of the air-launched anti-ship ballistic missile DF-21D, referred to as the CHS-X-13. In a published report by the U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency, DIA, it is mentioned that the standard DF-21D has a range of over 930 miles when launched from the ground. This new missile, utilizing lightweight composite materials, will have a range of over 1860 miles. Air launching the weapon can also help extend its range by eliminating the need to climb to tens of thousands of feet in altitude first. The DF-21D is equipped with a maneuverable warhead with conventional weaponry, and the CHS-X-13 may employ its basic design. The existing ground-based missile has limited ability to detect and home in on a specific target in the terminal phase of flight using radar and possibly infrared sensors on its warhead. It can also adjust its course mid-flight based on information received from other sources via a data link. A nuclear warhead would reduce the need for pinpoint accuracy and could make the weapon useful for simultaneously engaging large groups of targets, including entire U.S. Navy carrier strike groups. The CHS-X-13 is likely to build upon China's growing expertise in long-range ballistic missiles with maneuverable warheads in general, which is also a result of efforts to overcome potential missile defenses. It's worth noting that the People's Liberation Army Rocket Force, PLARF, already uses a larger medium-range ballistic missile, MRBM, called the DF-26. Last year, the China Aerospace Science and Industry Corporation, KASIC, also showcased a new short-range ballistic missile designed specifically for anti-ship purposes, known as the CM-401, at the Zhuhai Air Show, which is held every two years. Overall, in the coming years, the H-6N may utilize its large, semi-submerged mounting structure to accommodate a variety of different air-launched ballistic munitions and possibly future hypersonic weaponry. The bomber's ability to carry a large payload can ensure that it remains a valuable asset in the PLADF's arsenal, even as newer stealth bombers are introduced in the future. Similarly, the U.S. Air Force intends to continue flying its aging Cold War-era B-52 bombers for decades for similar reasons. Air-launched ballistic missiles are also becoming a more popular concept worldwide. The H-6N is also notably equipped with an aerial refueling probe on its nose, which can further enhance its flexibility and operational range, especially when engaging targets in the far reaches of areas that China considers its integral national territory, including the South China Sea and beyond. The ability to refuel in mid-air may also be essential for the aircraft to deliver munitions at the appropriate altitude and launch point. In any case, the H-6N could become another formidable addition to China's existing capabilities for area denial and anti-access, especially in the South China Sea. Furthermore, China's ability to detect and track maritime threats as well as potential adversaries in the air, undersea, and in space is rapidly improving, as are its command and control capabilities. When it comes to ship detection, the Chinese are increasingly using both manned and unmanned reconnaissance aircraft, as well as shore-based assets, including over-the-horizon radars. This provides the network needed to employ long-range anti-ship ballistic missiles effectively. As for the H-6N and its armament, we may learn more during the October 1st parade, 
especially if one of the aircraft flies over Tiananmen Square with some payload. With this official debut, we will almost certainly see more of these missile carriers in various scenarios, including exercises, which will also help reveal more about its precise capabilities. We will keep you updated on any new information about what China plans to showcase during this significant and heavily militarized event. Thank you for your attention. If you have any more questions in the future, please don't hesitate to reach out. Until we meet again, best of luck with your channel.